This video serves as part two to our discussion and demonstration of our three upper limb nerve tension or neural tension tests. In this video, we're going to demonstrate the passive techniques for ulnar, radial, and median nerve, otherwise known as upper limb nerve tension tests three, two, and one. So let's start with the median nerve upper limb tension test one. For this test, your patient is going to be laying down in a supine position. The arm can be relaxed by the side. From here, we're going to bring them into approximately 110 degrees of shoulder abduction, so just above horizontal. We're going to depress the shoulder. Uh, typically, I will do this by anchoring my hand to the table and then providing depression just at the distal end of the acromion. Once we're in this position, our next step is to extend the elbow, recognizing that we may or may not reach full elbow extension. As we extend the elbow, depending upon if there are any signs and symptoms, we would want to watch our patient's face. From here, we're going to extend the wrist and hand. And then our last sensitization test is to supinate the forearm and then ask the patient to take their head away from the involved arm. So take the opposite ear towards the opposite shoulder. Now, if this were positive and if our individual, our patient were getting any reproduction of symptoms, one of the metrics that we can do is we can take a measure range of motion wise of the angle of the elbow. And we can record that as the angle at which symptoms first began to be recognized or noticeable. A normal response would be a strong stretch, maybe even numbness and tingling through that median nerve distribution. However, if this is the reproduction of their pain or their symptoms, we would consider this to be the comparable sign. And at this point, the test would stop. We would take our measurement and document from there. The second test then is for the radial nerve, otherwise known as upper limb nerve tension test two. Now the passive sequence for this is also going to be with the individual in a supine position. We're going to first begin by depressing the shoulder. However, we need to support the arm in this case. So I'm going to use my elbow to depress the shoulder. I'm going to then use my hand to stabilize at the elbow. From here, we are going to internally rotate the entire extremity, and then finally flex the wrist and hand. At this point, we can ask the individual to further sensitize by taking their ear towards this side, and then taking their ear away from. In essence, seeing if the tension builds or releases based on cervical range of motion. Now, additionally, my body's going to block this a little bit, but we can actually use the table to support here. And in this case, we would switch hands, depress the shoulder with our opposite hand, internally rotate, and again, flex the wrist, and then use the cervical uh, rotation towards and away to grade the response. A normal sensation would be a strong, painful stretch over that radial distribution of the forearm or in the lateral upper arm. Again, we're looking for symptom reproduction or that comparable sign. Finally, upper limb nerve tension test three is for the ulnar nerve. With this test, we're gonna bring our patient back to an abducted shoulder of approximately 80 to 90 degrees. Again, we're going to um, create depression of the shoulder girdle, which can occur as such. At this point, we're going to pronate the forearm. We can do that by coming up and grasping the wrist and hand, and then flexing the elbow until the patient tells us there are any symptoms of which normal responses would be numbness and tingling or a strong stretch through the ulnar distribution, specifically the pinky finger. If there still are no symptoms, we can increase by externally rotating the shoulder, or by having the individual side bent away from us through the cervical spine. 
Again, we can take a goniometric range of motion measurement of the elbow to determine where those symptoms come on, documenting that, and then using that as a metric to either guide the progression or regression of treatment. So have a go with a peer or colleague for upper limb neural tension test one, two, and three, and let me know if there's any questions.